So um, in this session, and this is a very application-oriented session, so, so we are already sent you some, um, you know, concepts before, um, so that you have a look at that and have that in your arsenals to solve the questions that we have um, in today's session, uh, right? So, so that's that's what what um, we are already sent you. Now, if not gone through the session or not gone through those files, I request all of you to go through the files once and then come, uh, you know, after the session and, and then, uh, you know, maybe practice the questions that we would be giving you as a session PDF once more so that you have a fair idea. Also, after you've gone through these, uh, you know, uh, video files, there are also some other files in your free trial. You just need to log into your EGMAT account and you can all access all of that. Make sure you use all those uh, files so that your learning is complete. And yes, so with that, uh, I'll very quickly hide out this poll. And then let's talk about the next upcoming sessions that we have. Now we at EGMAT, um, uh, you know, conduct, we conduct webinars every weekend, both on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, the next Saturday, we have a session on GMAT sentence correction. And, and if any of you, you know, who, if any of you are trouble, struggling with GMAT sentence correction, you know, you don't understand how to solve difficult level questions, you don't understand how to use the meaning based approach, join this session. We have Shraddha and Stacy, two of our most senior and most experienced um, uh, GMAT uh, sentence correction experts over here, and they'll help you out. To understand how to go about this entire um, process. The next day, that is on Sunday, August 15th, we have a session on GMAT uh, algebra. And in this session, we'll be tackling the two most difficult, um, you know, uh, topics in GMAT algebra, which is inequalities and absolute values. And we'll, uh, we'll help you understand how to solve uh, questions out of these topics with, with, you know, very easily and it'll not take a lot of time to understand the processes. We'll also solve a lot of questions so that you understand um, the different type of question types which are tested on the GMAT. So I look forward to seeing in that webinar as well. To register for these two webinars, is simply click on this register now button and that will get you registered for both of these uh, uh, webinars over here. Uh, with that, we also have another session that's on 12th of August and we have Rohan who is one of our ex EGMAT student and he'll be talking about you know getting an admit and how to make sure that you get a scholarship from Duke Fuqua. And, and to get your uh, session pass for that one, simply click on get, uh, get your season pa session pass over here. That will register yourself um, for the session over here. Right? So with that, let me hide out this poll. And let me also very quickly hide out, uh, let me also very quickly bring in this poll. Now, I have this poll of um, your GMAT date. Now, if you've taken your GMAT date, can you kindly put that number over here? Let's take around 5 to 10 seconds to get that answer. And then let me also give you another question. With that, I would also want you to tell me what, according to you, is your current quant score? All right, I have the answers over here. Let me end the poll, both these polls over here. Now, a very fair distribution, as I can see over here, you know, people taking the test in, um, uh, in under a month's time is somewhere around 30%, I would say 20%. Um, then I also have around 45% of you taking the test in another two months, I would say, um, and then almost around 40 more percent who have not taken a date yet. So you know, if you belong to the category of student who is taking the de uh, test in the next 15 days, or you're someone who's not booked a date yet, you know, through this webinar, what I'll try to help you understand is how do you become better in number properties period, right? So as I want you to uh, focus on the webinar, be attentive, you know, make notes wherever you learn something new. We'll solve a lot of questions. We'll go through a lot of concepts as well in today's session. And at any point in time, if you have any any doubts, do let me know about that as well. Right about your current quant score, I can see that uh, uh, barring those uh, ten odd percentage or twelve odd percentage, the remaining uh, 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 people are around that Q45 or lesser than Q45 scores. So for you people, this session is going to be um, really very very important. 
Great. So let, with that, let me get started with the session, uh, session presentation screen. Um, okay, just give me one moment over here. I'll bring in the yes, no poll. All right. Okay. Please mark a yes if you can see my screen. Um, it would be a black presentation written number properties to uh, on on it. That is perfect. For people at whose end the PPT has not loaded yet, just give it 10 seconds and let me take those 10 seconds to help you understand the logistics for this session. Now you can, uh, so, so in the session, and this is a very interactive session, I don't want to, you know, the, you know don't, don't essentially want to keep it a monologue, so I always want to keep my sessions interactive in nature, and that's the reason we have two polls over here. Now, the, you can see one poll towards the right of your screen, which is answers Arthraya's question, and um, in this uh, poll, you know, I'll be asking you certain questions throughout the session, small questions through which you will solve questions that we have brought for, today, uh, brought for you today. So, so all of that answers need to go over here. And if you have any question or doubt um, related to the content that we have over here or anything else re related to GMAT strategy or how do you prepare for the exam, you can post that out in the, in, in the Q&A pod, which you can see at the bottom of your screen. And with me, I have Harsha, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you, um, I'll, I'll talk about him, and he'll help you out to, uh, you know, answer those questions that we'll have in the Q&A pod. Right, so with that, let me very, very quickly take my pen and hide my palette. All right, so with that, let me introduce myself and my co-host today. So I am Atra, I'm, I'm one of the um, SMEs, senior SMEs here at EGMAT. We, uh, with me, I have Harsha. And then we both are also GMAT strategy experts. So, so anything around GMAT strategy, GMAT quant is something that, that you can ask us at any point in time. That's completely okay. Uh, I, would be prime, I would be the primary host for today's session. Harsha would be supporting me throughout the session um, over here. So with that, let's very, very quickly look at this um, presentation. Now, this presentation, just a note over here, is made out of uh, the quant 2.0 course that we have. Now, the quant 2.0 course, if I've not gone through this, Please make sure you go through the course once to understand uh, the various aspects of adaptive learning and getting feedback throughout the entire learning process. And, and our students were very, very happy when we actually launched this um, Quant 2.0 course. And I'll also give you some data to back that up. Um, essentially, for someone who's good at Quant, um, uh, even for them, um, it's a very good course because you only learn what you need to learn because uh, since it's an adaptive course in nature, for someone who's not that good at quant, we start really from the basics. And then at any point in time, if you have any doubts or questions, you know, if that gets solved out on a real time basis. So, so no issues over that. And students are really very, very happy. Now, what happens when you launch a product like this and students are happy and they use the same? they become successful, right? And even our students became successful. You can see that we had the most number of um, Q49 scorers uh, on, on uh, verified reviews in gmatclub.com. And, and, uh, and you can see over here, it's almost twice uh, the number of TTP. And TTP, as you all know, is, is a company which, which is predominantly known for its quant content. Um, we, uh, on the other hand, are primarily um, we, we were known for our verbal content, content, but right now, even our students want us to create the verbal course very, very similar to what we have in the quant course over here. Not only that, we also have the most number of reviews, and that's counting. So, so I have the June data over here. I'll, I, I, I could have updated it. I'll, I'll update it the next time. We'll have the July data, the August data, and you can see over here, we deliver at, you know, almost four times the success that, that any other company um, would essentially deliver. So this, is, this translates to, to, uh, you know, to something that's uh, just really very, very important. And this gives you an idea of how our process is um, important in nature. Right? So with that, let's now talk about the webinar. We have two parts in the webinar. The first part is where we solve some questions and I've brought some questions, some serious concepts, some really nice um, ways to solve questions over here in today's session. We'll go through all of that and then uh, that will typically take you around two hours. And then if you have any questions around number properties, GMAT, uh, strategy, taking the GMAT or any of that, we'll take those questions up towards the end of the session.
right? Uh, the purpose of the session is very, very clear. Through this session, I want you people to understand two very important key, uh, things that, that to ace GMAT quant A, you need to have a very solid understanding of the basics, and B, you need to know what are the structured ways to solve questions. With that, uh, let me help you understand how do you go about this entire session. Now, I brought three questions, and they are data sufficiency questions. All these three questions are 700 plus level. Now, we'll first give you these three questions, and we'll not discuss their solutions right at the start. We'll discuss that at the end and come to that. So we'll first give you these three questions. I want you people to take a stab at it. Once you do that, we then start off with the learning process. So we'll, we'll learn the various concepts that GMAT tests you on number properties, specifically on divisibility and remainders through some warm-up questions. I have five, out of five of them. Then some problem-solving questions, which are typically around that 650 to 700 level. I have three questions of that type, and then four questions of, uh, of, the, type of, of four, uh, the, the level of 700 plus. Then the first three questions, which we initially solve, will again solve that out. But now, the only difference that has been created in the all learning uh, in a way are these, um, uh, I would say, uh, 12 questions. So through these 12 questions, we help you understand how to solve these three questions, which initially you might feel a bit difficult to solve. So that's the agenda for the session, right? So with that, I'll start off with the first question, question number eight. This is a DS question. We'll only discuss, uh, we'll on you'll only put in the answer. We'll not discuss the solution right away. We'll discuss the solution at the end um, when we do the question, uh, you know, once more, right? Um, okay, let me very quickly put in the poll over here. Everyone needs to put their answers in the poll. And um, now let's talk about, uh, let's also talk about timing. And I also see some people marking a still solving who already know how do we take sessions. So I want you to mark a still solving. And when 80% of you, who have marked a still solving chooses another answer choice apart from that will call time so in this session i don't time your i don't time you people you time yourselves right and um, so so that's how we go for all the questions that we have in today's session so i have 38 people have marked a still solving almost 100 people attending the webinar let's get this number to of 50 please and the more interactive you make, the more enjoy, uh, you know, you'll enjoy the session that much. So, so please make sure you interact, you put down your questions, you answer, and all of that. Okay, so I have 46 people who have marked the sales solving. I need another four people. Very, very quickly, guys. 49, need one more, 51. Perfect. All right. Uh, let's now move on to the first question. All the best for this one.
All right, last 10 seconds to mark your answer. If you've not marked the answer, please do so. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, I'm going to end the poll. I'll not broadcast the results or talk about the results right now. We'll next go to the next question. We'll solve our other two questions, and then we'll talk about these three questions in brief. So let me reopen the poll. I have question number nine for all of you. I have, I have question, the poll for question number nine. Let's very, very quickly put in, the yes, uh, put in the still solving so that I can give you the next question. Okay, let's get to that number of 50 people so that it becomes easy. And again, the faster you click on still solving, the faster you get the question, guys. So, so please do this. And it's a bit childish for me, but this is something that we do for all sessions, right? All right, thanks. I have my number. I'll give you question number nine. All the best for this one. Last five seconds. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. And we're not talking about the results right now. We'll go to question number 10. Let me very quickly get that poll for you. Here's the poll for question number 10. Can you please mark a still solving? And again, these questions, easy, medium, difficult, and all about everything, all the analysis, we will be doing it. So don't get, um, so, so be patient. Just give me some more time. We'll talk about all these questions now. Okay, I have my number. Let's move on to question number 10. All the best for this one, guys.
All right, last 15 seconds to mark your answer. If you've not marked it, please do so. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll now. All right, so I have my answers for all the three questions. Now, let me very quickly you know, reopen the short answer poll that you can see towards the right hand side of your screen. I want you to be able to tell me how were these three questions, guys. And let me also broadcast your results. So tell me, how are these uh, these three questions? Tough, okay. Difficult, okay. If if you if you're talking about difficulty, like, can you tell me on a scale of one to ten, what would you mark them as? Uh, ten being the most difficult. Mark them a nine, a eight, a seven, a five. Okay. Someone also tells me a five. That's good because. But because because you know then it's not feeling that difficult these ones huh someone tells me a three that's really nice okay that is some that is why some people cannot sleep <laughs> because these are difficult questions to be very honest now what would we do in the session now through the 12 questions that i have starting now uh, i'll help you understand the these three questions and how do you solve these three questions on your own now, I was just going through the, um, you know, accuracies. The accuracy is somewhere around that 30 percentage mark for the three questions that we had solved, uh, lesser for the, uh, for, the, for, for the third question, that's question number 10. Uh, we will now talk about these questions towards the end of the session when we uh, attempt these ones again. Um, now, we'll start off with the 12 questions that we have started, so we have with us. So, we'll start off with the first uh, warm up section uh, and, and this uh, section will have um, five questions. These are basic questions on divisibility and remainders. And then this will help you understand, gauge what's your standpoint or what, what's, the, uh, what's the standpoint on your current conceptual level. Uh, the, the solutions that we you know, have over here, not that detailed, but again, we'll make sure that you understand in and out of all of these ones, right? So I'll bring in the first question. Can you please mark a still solving over this board? As someone tells me, by the time we are done, these questions will seem easy, absolutely correct. And that's what we are trying to, you know, build in this session as well. All right, let me very quickly clear all the answers. I have 44 people. Let's get six more people. Mark are still solving. I'll give, give you the next question right away. 52, that's perfect. All right. The first warm-up question here on your screen. All the best for this one, guys. All right, last five seconds. Let's very, very quickly put in the answers in the short answer poll. Uh, in, in the, in the uh, answer poll, sorry. Advait, if you cannot see the question, I'll recommend you to please log out once and log in. That should, um, you know, clear that out for you. Okay, perfect. Let me end the poll and very quickly broadcast the results. Now, 75% of you tell me that the answer for this question is choice B. 13% of you tell me it's choice A. And 4% um, of you tell me it's choice C. All right. Now, I'll very quickly reopen the short answer poll. I want you people to tell me 
Uh, in this question, since we see that Z is a three-digit number whose digits are consecutive numbers in increasing order, and we are trying to figure out the relationship between Z and divisibility of three, can you people tell me what's the rule of divisibility of three? In the short answer poll, very, very quickly, please. The sum of the three numbers, the sum of the digits, uh, should be divisible by three. Absolutely correct. Now, I also saw someone typing, um, you know, some random numbers. You can also do it that manner. But again, you know, taking numbers to solve questions, there might be difficult. Um, there, there might be difficult questions for any question for who uh, for whom you know we know the concept. It's fairly suggested that you follow the correct approach, right? But again, that's also something that we would see in the session. So, so that's also there. Now, in this question, it's very simple. It's a three. Uh, Z is a three-digit number whose digits are consecutive numbers in, in in an increasing order. So, what I do is I take the digits in this number to be x, the first digit. The second then becomes x plus one. The third becomes x plus two. Now, when I add the three digits that I have over here, what do I get? I get three x plus three as the total sum. Now, three x plus three can be written as three times something. That's x plus one. So, three times something. I'm getting a number which is a multiple of three. Now, since this is a multiple of three definitely this is divisible by three so the answer for this question is choice a now people who marked uh, you know choice choice a as the answer people who mark choice a as the answer there are nine people i also see three more people marking choice c i want you people to tell me where did you falter and let's get to that very quickly it's very very important to understand where did you fault to make sure you do not repeat the same mistake again and again so, so please tell me, people who mark choices A or C, where did you falter? You can put that in the short answer poll. I took three random numbers missing consecutive. Ah, so yes, that's that's what I was talking about, right? So if you take numbers, there's a very high chance that you would mess up some place or the other because you know even the GMAT people who have created the test know that there are certain students who will take random numbers to to solve out this question. So please do not fall for this trap, right? Okay, so with that, let's move ahead to, uh, to the next question. Sorry for that. I'll very quickly clear all the answers over here. Uh, can you please mark a still solving, please? Let's very, very quickly get the still solvings over here. I did not write it out, realized you can factor out three. Oh, but that's fine. You did not make this mistake. It's a very small mistake. Uh, and you'd not make that mistake again. That's uh, that's something that I can be sure of. Um, John, so yes. Okay, so I have my numbers over here. Let's move to the second warm-up question. All the best for this one, guys. All right, let's take another five to seven seconds to mark our answers. Three, two, and one. Okay, let me, um, you know, end the poll over here, broadcast the results. Now the results are so varied in nature. Okay, so what do I have? 43% of you marking choice A, 41% of you marking choice C, another 7% who mark choice B as the answer. Now, uh, what do I have? I have a Z, same number, uh, but, but slightly with a different constraint. It's a four digit number now. Whose digits are consecutive numbers, I need to you know, find out the relationship between Z and the divisibility of four. So, very, very quickly in the short answer poll, guys, what is the divisibility of four? 
and MJ has already written that from uh, before I even asked the question. That's good. Let's very quickly get the answers. What's the concept for divisibly of a number being divisible by four? The last two digits have to be divisible by four, right? The last two digits have to be divisible by four. Absolutely correct. So we'll apply the same concept over here as well now. Can I, and let me bring in the yes no poll very quickly. Now you people tell me, can I take x, x plus one, x plus two, and x plus three as the four digits for this question? Can I do that? Just very similar to what we did in the last question, can, can we do that? We cannot do that. Now what's the reason? What's the reason of, of us not being able to do that? And then thank you for all of your answers. I'll, I'll, I'll end the poll over here. Thank you for all of your answers. I'll, I'll take this poll over here. Now I'll tell you what's the reason. The reason is I do not know the value of x. And if I do not know the value of x, what's the value of x plus 2 or x plus 3, which are the last two digits, right? And, and it brings, back, um, brings me back to square 1, makes no difference, right? So that's the reason we cannot take the digits to be x, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3. So what's the other technique to solve this question? The technique to solve this question is, what kind of different numbers do I have? Now, I can have two different kind of numbers, right? Z can either be odd or Z can be even. If Z is odd, there's no chance that Z is divisible by 4. If Z is even, there's, there's a chance that Z, uh, Z is divisible by 4. But again, even then, there are two possible cases. For example, the number 1, 2, 3, 4. Here, the digits are, uh, you know, uh, the digits are consecutive in nature. But are the last two digits divisible by 4? No. So this number is not divisible by 4. However, in case of 3, 4, 5, 6, the last two digits, which is 56, is divisible by 4. So there are certain Z's which can be divisible by 4, but, but there are also certain Z's which are not divisible by 4. So Z always divisible by 4, not possible because we can have Z to be odd as well. Z is not divisible for, by 4, that's also not possible because there are certain numbers which are divisible by 4. So this is also not possible. That tells me that the answer for this question is choice A. Now people who mark choice B and C as the answer, effectively and, and more importantly people who mark choice C, please tell me where did you falter? Which was the step that you did not consider? Or, or what was that, um, you know, uh, part over there? I took the x, x plus 1 approach. I hope that approach is now clear. Why can we not, um, why can we not do that? Yes, the sum of digits only works for divisibility of 3 or 9 and all of that. But it won't work for 4, right? Okay. So, so you people slightly got, you know, some of you use the x x plus 1 um, uh, concept. Again, please understand, I'm looking at the values of the last two digits, not the sum. Since I need the values, I need to know the value of x. Since I do not know that, I cannot answer the question with that information. Some of you also tried taking numbers but, but missed a few cases. So the best way to make sure that you do not may, may, you know, miss cases is basically understand what kind of a number can be. So Z is a normal proper number. It can either be an odd number or an even number, right? That's how you break down information and, and, and translate the information into mathematical form to make sure that you do not make a mistake. But again, all of this, our learnings, make sure you keep this to the next question as well, right? So for the next question, let me hide out this poll, give you the, uh, let me very, very quickly bring in, bring in the poll for the next question. I'll just take a moment over here. Okay, I have the next question. Perfect. Can you please mark us still solving? That is perfect. Let's now move to question number three. All the best for this one, guys.
Okay, last five seconds to, to put, put your answers in the poll. I request all of you to not put the answer in the short answer poll, guys. Please maintain that. I have a poll for all of you. Please make sure you put your answers in that only. All right. Another two seconds. If you've not put your answer, please do so. Three, two, and one. Okay, I'm going to end the poll and broadcast the results. So I can see 86% of you have tell me uh, that the answer for this question is try C. That's the number ending with 896. And I have some people, around four people I can see over here, mark choices A or B. So let's very, very quickly understand what's the question. Um, what is the number closest to this bigger number? That's a multiple of 8. Now I'm going to open the short answer poll. Tell me, what's the divisibility rule for multiple of 8? The last two, uh, the last three digits should be divisible by eight, right? The last three digits should be divisible by eight, right? Absolutely correct. Absolutely spot on. So we'll do the same thing over here as well. I'm not going to look at this bigger number. I'm just concerned about the last three digits. Now, what are the last three digits in this number? It's 897. Now, when I divide 897 by uh, eight, I get a remainder of one, right? So basically, the two closest numbers, which are a multiple of 8 and are around uh, 897, is I can either subtract a 1 over here or add a 7 over here to get both these numbers. So I, I get option A, I get option C. Both of them um, uh, is something that's, uh, both of these numbers are divisible by 8. Now, I need to find out the closest one. Which do I go to? Which number do I go to? Obviously, the number that's only one number away from my original number, that's the number ending with 896, which makes choice C the right answer for this question. Right? I hope all of you got this question correctly. Now, to you know, understand this, the last three digits more effectively, you can also break that out. Maybe you can break that out as 800 plus 80 uh, plus 16, that would give you 896. So that's also something that you can do. Again, just from the standpoint of how do you ease your calculations, is, is, uh, this is something that I would uh, recommend all of you to follow. Right? So with that, let me very, very quickly move on to the next question. I'll bring in the fourth warm-up question for all of you. I'm going to reopen the poll that I have over here. I want you people to mark a still solving. Let's get 50 people very, very quickly so that I give you the next question. I have 42, need eight more, guys, quickly, please. 48, 49, 50, 51, okay, perfect. I'll give you question number four, all the best for this one. All right, last 10 seconds to mark your answer. If you have not done that, please do so. Three, two, and one. Okay, I'm going to end the poll.
and broadcast results. Now, which was that one choice? I'm gonna open the short answer poll. Which was that one choice that you should not have chosen? Tell me in the short answer poll. Which was that one choice that you should not have chosen? You, sh you should know it's choice E because they do not have five choices over here. So, so this this is something that you should not have chosen. <laughs> I'm very sorry for this poll. I'll, I'll change the poll the next time. I'm sorry for this. But yeah, I was just waiting. So someone choosing choice. Yeah, I'll have to catch that person and told, wow, did you get that? Okay, that's good. I'm going to end the poll. Thank you for all of your answers. Now, let's look at this question. It's a very interesting question. Uh, and uh, let, Let's read this out first. Now, if a, is, uh, if a number n leaves a remainder 3 when divided by 204, what is the remainder when n is divided by 4? So this is a question of a number n which is getting divided by 2, 0, 4 once. I'm getting a remainder. It's also getting divided by 4 once and I'm getting a remainder. Just need to understand what's the remainder in the second case. Now through this question, I am going to teach you something, something new, right? So I'll take some time around a minute or so to, to help you understand this process. I want you people to follow this process in and out so that we can use the process in the next questions. Again, I want you people to use this process because this is a new process. A lot of you might not like it at the first go. Trust me, you find the effectiveness of the process once we are done with another five, six questions. So what do I have? I have a number n that's leaving a remainder of uh, three when divided by two, zero, four. Now, essentially, We've all learned this uh, you know, concept right from our childhood, which is dividend is equal to divisor times quotient plus remainder. Now the remainder over here is, is um, have just one slight constraint that the remainder always needs to be less than the divisor, right? It can either be zero or, or, or less than the divisor. It can never be equal to the divisor or higher than the divisor or anyway the negative number. So dividend is equal to divisor times quotient plus remainder. If I read the first part of the statement, what does it tell me? n leaves a remainder of 3 when divided by 204. So I can write n, which is the original number, to be equal to 204 times q, where q is the quotient, plus 3, where 3 is the remainder. I can also write n to be 4 times p plus r, because I know that when n is divided by 4, I am assuming a quotient of p and the remainder to be equal to r. I need to find out the value of r to mark the final answer, right? So this is a new concept. I just want you people to focus on this new concept. I've written the value of n in two different ways based on the information that's given in the question. Now what do I do? Since I see that in both these equations, the left-hand sides are equal, um, I have n over here. I'll try to equate the right-hand sides as well. I'll not equate, but try to write the first equation in terms of the second equation. How? I have 204q plus 3, right? And I need to write it in, for, in the form of 4p plus r. What I'll do over here is I'll, I'll just understand, is 204p divisible by 4? Yes, it is. Is 3 divisible by 4? No, it is not. So I can just divide 204p and get a number of the form 4p, or 204q rather, I'll get a number of the form 4p. Now 204q, when I divide this by 4, I get this as 4 times 51q, right? 204q can be written as 4 times 51q. If I consider the value of p to be 51q, n, which was 204q plus 3, can now be written as two, uh, 4 times of p, where p is the quotient, plus the remainder. The next thing that I need to check over here is the constraint that I have for remainder. Is the remainder less than 4? Yes, 3 is a number that's less than 4. So I can say that n over here is written in the form of 4p plus r. I need to find out the value of r. The value of r comes out to be 3. Now, for this question, you might find that you're not, you know, if you want to, uh, let's say, you know, put your hand on your nose, you're not doing it in the most most effective manner. You're roaming it around your ha you know, head back from the back of your head and then uh, touching your nose. Now, for this question, it might feel so. It also might feel so because you're doing it for the first time, but I want you to embrace this process. Why do I want you to embrace this process? Because once you do this, 
the next set of questions that we have, also the DS questions that we have, and all the 700 plus level questions that the GMAT, you know, tests you um, on, on um, you know, on the actual test uh, would be you, if you use this process, the question becomes very, very easy. And we'll also see that in our coming questions. Um, Shashank has a question, what level of question is this? This is typically of the form of 600, I would say, Shashank, not more than that. But through this, please learn the concept. Okay, very, very quickly in the yes, no poll, is the process clear to all of you? Please mark a yes or a no if the process is clear or not clear. And for anyone for whom the process is not clear, just put that in the short answer poll. What is not clear? I'll help you out understand. Very, very quickly, what is not clear? I'll also explain this uh, solution to one, once more because, because it's needed so that you understand, um, you know, you understand how to go about this process from the start. I'll explain this. Okay, so what I can see is I just want, I, if I explain the process once more, you would be able to do it, right? Okay, perfect. So let me do that very quickly. I'll hide out the poll. Thank you for all of your answers. I'll very quickly hide out the poll, clear all the answers, and let's now talk about this. Now, what do I have over here? I have n to be equal to 204q plus 3. n is also equal to 4p plus r. Now, is this clear to all of you? Mark a yes. People who had an issue with the process earlier, is this clear to all, all, I guess, 13 of you were there? Is this clear to all of you? I'm just using the concept of dividend is equal to divisor times quotient plus remainder. Okay, it's clear to all of you. That is fantastic. Let me hide out this pool over here, clear all the answers. Thank you for all of your responses. Now, what do I have? I'll just use the process of visualization because I see that the left-hand side in both these cases are equal, right? I have an N. So I can compare, mark the term, compare, 204q plus 3 and 4p plus r. Now, if I compare these two terms, right, I'll just try to write the first term in terms of the second term. And why do I need to do this? If I do this and I get the value of r, that's my answer, right? That's my answer. So basically, I'm trying to compare 204q plus 3 and write it in terms of 4p plus r. Now, very, very quickly, in a yes, no, is the intent clear to all of you? Why am I writing in terms of 4p plus r? Is that intent clear to all of you? People who had an issue. I'm writing it so that I get the value of r and that's my final answer. That's the intent behind this, right? Okay, perfect. That is perfect. Let me clear all the answers over here and let's go to the next step. So now what I see is I'll, since I'm comparing, I'm trying to write 4, 204q plus 3 in terms of 4p. And Orko asks me, what's P over here? P is the quotient, Orko. P and Q are quotient um, for this, right? Okay. So I'll write, I'm just comparing 204Q in terms of 4P. I see the 204Q is a number which can be divided by 4, right? 3 is another number. Now, can 3 be divided by 4? No. So I'll first divide 204Q by 4 to, you know, decrease the complexity of this term over here. So I'll divide 204Q by 4, and how do I get, what do I get? I get 51Q. So 204Q can be written as 4 times P if I consider P to be equal to 51Q. So I simply divided by the divisor that I had in the second equation, right? I divided by the divisor I had in the second equation. Once I do that, what do I have? I have N in terms of 4Q, or sorry, 4P plus R. What the next step is, is to check the constraint over remainder. The remainder always needs to be less than the divisor, right? So first is you, whatever you numbers you have, you divide that with the divisor that you have over here. Simplify that out. Once you simplify that out, you can write it in terms of 4p plus r. That intent becomes more easy. You reach closer to that answer. So that's the process. I'll again reiterate the process to you. Whatever number you have over here, divide it by the divisor that you can see in, in this uh, expression. That would make things easy for you. So I, I have four, 204q plus 3. I'll very quickly check. Is 204q divisible by 4? Yes, it is. So I'll divide this out. Is 3 divisible by 4? Not. It's not. So I'll leave that out. Right? So that's how you reach um, in this process. 
how do you get P is equal to 51Q? If you divide 204Q by 4, and why do I divide by 4? Because I told you, you need to divide by the divisor that I have in the second expression, you get 51Q, right? And that's the value of P, right? So you get 4 times P plus R, I just need to check whether R is less than the divisor, it is, the value of R is 3, and then R is the final answer. Now, very, very quickly in the yes, no poll, is this process now clear to all of you? I gave you the shortcuts as well. You essentially have to divide the number that you have in the first equation by the, num by the divisor of the second equation, right? Now, you might feel, what if the number is not divisible by 4? There can be infinite what ifs in a question. We'll not focus on that part, right? There can be infinite, uh, you know, ifs and, ifs and nots. We'll not, not go into that part. Let's only focus on the question that we have at our hand, right? So with that, let me clear out this poll, give you the next question. Can you please mark a still solving in this one? And there are also some people who, who, who ask me, what if the number that I have over here is not divisible by 4? We'll look into those questions as well. Do not worry about that. Right? Okay, I have 45 people. Let's get another 5 people very, very quickly. Let's get 5 more people. Mark are still solving, please. Okay, that's perfect. Question number 5 on your screen. All the best, everyone. All right, question number five, last three seconds to answer the question in the poll. Please mark your answer. I'm going to end the poll in another two seconds, guys. Two, one, and zero. OK, let me end the poll, broadcast the results. I can see 70% of you tell me that the answer for this question is choice A. Now, very, very quickly, the yes, no poll, because I need to understand which process did you follow. Now, tell me. How many of you followed the process that we learned in the previous question? And be very honest to yourself. I'm just trying to understand what's, what's the acceptance level over here. Just, just be very honest. I'm just trying to understand the acceptance level. Okay, this is interesting. If you have followed the last, if you have followed the last approach, please mark a yes. If you have not, please mark a no. Okay, last two seconds. That is perfect. I'm going to end the poll. So I can see 38% of you tell me you did, which is, which is really very, very nice because we tend to get around 30% people marking yes for this question, for question number five. The numbers slightly go up as, as, um, as we do more questions. 62% uh, of you who marked a no, again, I know. Now, this is a request you can ask. Uh, you can say, this is a request from my end. It might seem a very new approach to all of you. I just want you people to embrace this approach, right? Once you embrace this approach, you will find the beauty of this approach, especially when we go to the last uh, 
um, three questions over there, right? So, so, so I know it's hard, but just try a little bit more. That's it. Okay, that is perfect. So I'm going to hide out this poll. Thank you for all of your answers being so honest. Let's now discuss this question. I have n. And leaves a remainder of 6 when divided by 205. I'm going to open the short answer poll. Tell me how can I write n in the form of dividend is equal to divide the times quotient plus remainder. In the short answer poll, the first part of the statement, let's do this very quickly. n is equal to 205q plus 6. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. So n can be written as 205q plus 6. Now I need to find out the remainder of n when divided by 5. So n is also written as 5p plus r. What's the constraint that I have over here? r needs to be less than 5, right? r needs to be less than the divisor in this question. Perfect. Now, what do I have? I have two numbers. Again, need to compare both of them. What was the trick that I told you in the last question? divide and understand which of these numbers are divisible by the divisor over here. The divisor over here is 5. So is 205q divisible by 5? Yes. Is 6 also divisible by 5? Partially yes, because I get a remainder out of it, right? So I'll first divide 205q by 5. I can write p to be equal to 41q. Okay, I also have 6. Now, if I divide 6 over here by 5, um, I can write this as 5 times 1 plus 1, where 1 is the quotient, 1 is the remainder, right? So, as effectively, the value of p becomes, so I can write 205q plus 6 to be equal to 5 times of 41q plus 1, which is the value of p plus 1. Now, I check the value of 1 over here. I can see that 1 is less than 5, so that can directly be the answer. Let's say you do not do this process. Let's say we do go through the process that's written over here. I write 205q to be equal to 5 times 41q, right? So the value of p becomes 41q. I write n as 5 times q plus 6, where the value of remainder is equal to 6. Now, is 6 less than 5? It is not. Since it's not, we again have to divide 6 by 5 to reach to the final answer. So this is one reason why some of you have marked choice D as the answer. You forgot the constraint that the remainder always needs to be less than the divisor over here. Again, this is a mistake that you would commit once but not twice, right? So both these processes, the, the first process where I take P to be equal to 41Q and the process where I take P to be equal to 41Q, plus 1 are both these processes crystal clear to all of you. Please mark a yes in, in, in the yes no poll. Okay, the numbers are increasing, which is fairly good to notice. That's, that's perfect. That is good. All right, thank you for all of your responses, guys. We'll take this learning that we have over here and then move on to the next set of questions, right? Thank you for all of your responses. Let me very quickly clear all the answers. Okay, so now we have seen two cases where there might be a possibility that the remainder is not less than the divisor. So, so we have to make um, we have to make sure that we do not commit a mistake over there. So that brings us to the end of the warm up section. We had practiced five warm up questions, and then it's fairly fairly fine. And let me very quickly um, give you another poll over here on how many warm up questions did you get correct. And let me very quickly clear all the answers. Yes, go ahead, guys. How many warm-up questions did you get correct? And let me also increase this so that you can see the fifth option as well. Okay, so majority of you tell me it's four or five. I have around 25% people telling me it's either one or two or three. That's okay. Again, the major point over here is that we take all the learnings that we have and we'll move ahead with the next set of questions. Plus, we'll not make the same mistake, uh, you know, twice. Right. So with that, let's now move ahead to the next set of questions. Let me hide out all these polls and please understand that these questions are warm up questions and not that difficult as I told you. Right. The, the questions which are actually asked on the GMAT are much, much more difficult and they'll require a very high uh, usage of applications of what we learned over here. 
So make sure you understand all these questions in and out. Right? So with that, let me give you the poll for the first question, reopen this, and now we are moving to the next set of GMAT level questions, the problem solving types of that 600 to 650 level. Please mark a still solving. I have the poll for all of you, right? Please mark a still solving. Let's get, seven, uh, let's get 50 people mark a still solving. I have 41, need nine more. Fifty-four. That's perfect. Let's move on to question number one. All the best, everyone. All right, last five seconds to mark your answer. Three, two, and one. Let me end the poll, broadcast the results. So 66% of you tell me that the answer for this question is try C. Um, 19 plus two, that's 22, uh, 19 plus 3, that's 22 percent of you tell me it's either choices B, C, uh, B, D or E. So let's let's look at this, um, you know, question. But before that, I want you people to tell me how many of you did the math. That means calculated the value of M first by doing 30 times 8.2 and then solved the, the question. How many of you did that? Okay, let's let's see these numbers. This is very interesting. The tough fight going on, as you can see in the poll. I have a 50, 46 versus 54 right now. Okay, that is perfect. Thank you for all of your answers. I'm going to end the poll right now. Okay, so what do I have? I have a 47 versus 53. So it's a, it's a, it's a tough fight. Now, for this question, obviously, any of the two methods, you know, if you are going, calculating the value of M, it does work. I'm not saying it won't work. But what if the numbers become difficult in nature? 30 and 8.2 is replaced with such numbers for which calculations are difficult. 
obviously we don't want you to calculate right because the more you calculate the higher the chances of getting some incorrect result so what's the way out the way out is something that we learned in the last two questions how do you use that let's see now what do i have over here m is a positive integer and m by 30 is equal to 8.2 so essentially uh, you know I, I know that dividend is equal to divisor times quotient plus remainder and I also know that the remainder is less than the divisor and what is the divisor? The divisor in this question is equal to 15. So since m is equal to 8.2 times 30, I simply write that out over here. Now 8.2 is a decimal number, right? I need to divide into two parts. One is the uh, integral part, the other is the decimal part over here. Now I have 30 times 8 plus 30 times 2. Now what's the value of 30 times 2? It's equal to 6. Keep that in mind. I can also write m in the form of 15p plus r where 15 is the divisor, p is the quotient, r over here is the remainder. Keep that in mind that I have a constraint. r needs to be less than 15. Now very simple pose this. What do I have? I have n in the form of 30 times 8 plus 6, right? 30 times 8 plus 6 needs to be written in 15 times p plus r. So I'm just visualize, visualizing this. I have a 6, I've kept that out because 6 is not divisible by 15 as I already told you. I have 30 times 8. Now 30 times 8, I need to divide this by 15. Is it divisible? Yes, it is. To get a 15 from 30, I can split that 30 into two parts. One is 15, the other is 2. So what I do over here is write 30 times 8 as 15 times 2, which is essentially 30 times 8. This is much more readable in nature because I can, you know, I've written this in the form of 15p, where the value of p is 16 over here, 2 times 8 plus r. Now, is r less than 15? Yes, it is. Can I directly write the answer? Can I directly go to the answer? Yes, I can. So I'll do this, reach the answer, and this process would not take you more than 15 seconds to 20 seconds if you know the approach in and out. And that is the reason why, I'm, why I want you people to, you know, essentially embrace this method. All right, the yes, no poll very, very quickly. Is the solution clear to all of you? Let me open the poll. Is the solution clear to all of you? Okay, I see five people tell me that the solution is not clear to them. Can you please post what issues did you face over here? In the short answer poll, very quickly so that I can address them right away. What were the problems that you people faced? Why could you not understand the solution? The value of P, okay. How did we get P as 2 times 8? Okay. What else? All right. So we'll just go back a step back, right? We'll go one step back. What did I have over here? 30 times 8 plus 6, right? So I had 30 times 8 plus 6. Now, what did I tell you in the last two questions? Always divide these numbers with the divisor I have in the second equation. Yes or no? I did that, right? Always divide it with the number I had in the second equation. So I have to divide this with, and I have to compare which of these numbers are divisible by 15. Which of these number can I divide with 15? 30 times 8, I can divide with 15. Can I divide 6 by 15? No. So I'll place 6 directly over here since this is not divisible by 15. I have 30 times 8. I need to write this number in the form of 15p. So I break 30 into two parts, 15 times 2, because I need to write it in form of 15p, right? So I break it in two parts as 15 times 2. When I break this in two parts, what do I get? I get 15 times 2 times 8. So I had a 30, that becomes 15 times 2. I had an 8, I write that 8 as it is. So now I get the number to be as 15 times p. Whatever the value of p, I'm not interested in that. I just need to write the number in terms of 15 times p. If this is clear to all of you, can you please now change your no to a yes in the same poll? Okay, I see it's clear to all of you. That is perfect. Again, I'll, I'll give you another, I'll give you this another time. Always divide what I have in the first expression by the divisor in the second expression. Not directly divide, but compare which are the terms, which are the terms that can be divided, right? 
that's how you become efficient in this process. That's it. Right? So with that, I'll move on to the second question uh, over here. Now, I can see a lot of questions in the Q&A pod saying, uh, I, I hope that they are taken care of. All right. I can move ahead to the next question. Let me just uh, get you the poll for the second question. Okay, the poll is up. Can you please mark us still solving? Let's get 50 people very, very quickly mark us still, uh, mark us still solving and then I give you the second question. All right, that is perfect. Let's go to question number two. All the best for this one. All right, last five seconds to mark your answer. Okay, perfect. Now I can see some of you tell me that um, you know why do we follow this approach it seems a bit more convoluted it's not naturally coming to me i understand because i'm teaching you something very very new but understand this fact why am i teaching you something that's a new is slightly convoluted and um, so what's the reason for me to do that the only reason for that is to ensure that for those 700 level questions that you would get in your number properties um, you know, section when you're taking the GMAT, you don't mess up using the initial approaches that you usually have because they would make you fall in traps, right? And that's the entire set. That's what I'm trying to teach you about. Now, if you learn this technique, all questions, and I would rather say 95% of questions, 95%, mind you, is a very, very big number. All of those 95% of questions would be done within the shortest amount of time without any uh, you know errors in accuracy and you would be confident about that because you're only using one approach you're not using multiple approach to solve questions in number of properties divisibility remainders right so that's the reason i just want you people to embrace it you would only be able to embrace it once you take it properly if you do not do that it's it's not going to work so you need to you know take a step from your current approach right now just try to do this in, 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 in this format, right? So I'll very quickly broadcast the results. Let's see. 81% of you tell me that the answer for this question is choice C. I'm going to bring the same poll again. How many of you did the math for this question? 
that is calculated the value of m to be equal to 8.2 times 15 and be very honest to yourself i just want to you know analyze the, the, the thinking over here it's completely fair if you do it that way it's completely okay i just want you people to tell me that okay i'll end the poll i have a 17 versus an 83 percentage um, difference over here so so I'll, I'll, I'll so that's that's good that you people are changing your approach and you would see the re reason very very quickly you know very honestly uh kuldeep has a question why what's wrong with the solution see there's nothing wrong with the other solution you know taking a number solving it out calculating the device it's not at all do, do, you know wrong or incorrect it's just that i'm trying to teach you a method which would make you solve more difficult questions easily and how do i do that by teaching you the method taking easy questions if i take difficult questions to teach you a method that doesn't work that effectively right so that's what i'm trying to do over here i just want you people to trust me that's it okay so what's uh, what's the question over here m is a positive integer m by 15 is equal to 8.2 again very very similar to the last question so i divide 8.2 into two parts one is 8 the other is 0 0.2 m when divided by 30 what's the remainder so m can also be written as 30 p plus r where r is less than 30 right so i need to find out find out the value of r now 8.2 is divided into two parts 15 times 0 0.2 essentially becomes how much it becomes 3 and then uh, i have 15 times 8 now this is this is this is very interesting i have 15 times 8 i need to write this in terms of 30 p plus r as i told you before what's the divisor over here 30 so i try to compare which of these terms are divisible by 30 is 15 times 2 which is equal to 3 divisible by 30 no is 15 times 8 divisible by 30 or or would it give a remainder if i divide if i divide this by 30 yes it would so i'll divide 15 times 8 by 30 to to make it in terms of 30p right so what i do over here is i need to have a 30 i have a 15 how to convert a 15 to a 30 i need an even number i need a 2 from from the other number so i have an 8 over here i'll just take one two over here create a 30 with the 15 so i write 8 to be equal to 2 times 4 I have 15 times 2 that is equal to 30 i can write this as 30 times 4 plus 3 which is of the form of 30 p plus r right 30 p plus r now is r less than 30 yes it is okay is that the answer yes it is so directly i can mark choice c as the answer tell me is the solution clear to all of you again new approach i understand difficult i even understand that but just trust me for another 20 on minutes you would see the result for this right that is good i can see 96 percent of you are fine right that is good okay puja has a very interesting question can we follow the approach of 8 plus 2 by 10 again i would not want you to go through that you would get the answer as 3 at by any which method you do it but i would re rather recommend you not to go through that um, method right so so that's something um again understand embrace this new method it will help you solve out the difficult questions with that let's move on to question number three let me give you the poll for question number three please mark are still solving let's get 50 people mark are still solving over here i have 25 let's get to the number 50 very quickly 42 i need eight more i've been nagging about this all through the session i'm sorry about that okay i have my number 50 let's go to question number three all the all the best for this one
All right, last five seconds, guys. Last five seconds. Three, two, and one. Okay, let me end the poll and broadcast the results. So 72% of you tell me that the answer for this question is choice E. 11% uh, go with choice B. Another almost around 8% with choices um, uh, C and D. Now, very quickly, in the yes no poll, how many of you calculated the value of M? Again, did the math over here. M to be equal to 15 times 9.2 and then you divide and then you reach the answer. Okay. All right, let me end the poll. It's a 76 versus 24. So few of you who did not do it in the last question did it over here just because you found that, you know, 15, 9.2, slightly difficult numbers. Again, I'll make this very easy for you. You'd not find it difficult. Let's go with the process. Now, what do I have over here? 15 uh, times 9.2 to be the value of M, right? So what I do is I'll divide this into two parts. One is 15 times 9. The other is... Uh, 15 times 0 0.2 now 15 times 0 0.2 is essentially 3 and I also have um, uh, m to be equal to 30 p plus r r has to be less than the divisor which is 30 over here so r has to be less than 30 now I'll do what I'll look at these two terms I'll see which of these two terms can be written in terms of 30 p and I then see I have a term 3 and 3 in terms of 30 p makes no sense However, I have a term 15 times 9 that can be written in terms of 30p by slightly, you know, making some um, uh, numbers um, here and there. Now, how do I do that? I have a 15. I need to make it 30. How do I convert a 15 to a 30? I need a 2 for that. Do I have a 2 from 9? Essentially, I do not. If I divide this by 2, I have 4.5 mixes of the calculation. So what I do is I write 9 to be 8 plus 1. What is the intent of writing 8 plus 1 as 9? Because since I have an 8, I can take a 2 from this 8 and my calculations would now become very easy. So I'll simplify this out. What do I have? 15 times 8. That can be easily written in terms of 30p. I then have 15 times 1 and 3, which essentially translates into 18. So I have 15 times 8. That means 15 times 2 times 4, something that we did in the last question, which is 30 times 4 or written in the form of 30p. And then I have 18 uh, remaining. Now, is 18 less than 30? It is. Can that be the answer? Yes. So I mark choice E as the final answer for this question. So three different questions, three different kind of, uh, you know, I would say uh, uh, management or, or how do you convert numbers into proper terms so that you get 15s, 30s and all of that. Let's look at all these three cases here. Firstly, I had 30 needed to convert it into 15p that was easy just took a 2 from it converted 30 into 15 becomes very easy secondly i had a 15 i had to convert that into a 30 what i did is i took a 2 from the 8 that i had over here and then converted this into a 30 lastly i had a 15 i needed to convert into 30 but i had an odd number so i do, you know broke this odd number into two parts which is an even number plus 1 took a 2 from this even number and then um, got this question uh, got this question correct. Now Nabil has a question for me. Why taking 15 point, uh, times 2 times 4.5 wrong since we are comparing the equation? Again, it's not wrong. It is just going to complicate things for you. You can do the same thing. It will it will complicate things for you. You can write it as 30 times 4.5. But 4.5, can that be a quotient? It cannot be a quotient. So you need to write it as 30 times 4 plus 30 times 0 0.5. Are you doing that correctly? If you're doing that way, it's absolutely correct. You can even do that, not a problem. But again, you have to either, you know, break that 9 initially or break that 4.5 later. But you have to essentially break that part into the, 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 the parts that we require for this question. I hope, Nabil, that's, that's, um, that answers your question over here. Right. So three different questions, three different approaches for these three questions. I hope it's clear to all of you. That is good. OK, we'll now move on to question number four. But before we move on to question number four, 
tell me in a yes no and i want you to be very very honest with me is this concept clear to 100% and i'll reopen the poll or right now okay you can now mark your answers is the concept of dividend is equal to divisor times quotient plus remainder clear okay if it's 90 versus 10 so i can still it's rather 92 versus 9 so i can still go with this number completely that's that's good so i'm going to end the poll clear all the answers thank you for all of your responses now let's come to a very interesting part in this top in this uh, webinar we'll try to understand this concept in a much more detailed fashion right now uh, and and we'd be using the uh, yeah, short answer poll uh, a lot during this process so, so keep an eye out so let's say if I ask you that, um, you know, I need to find out the remainder when 31 plus 43 is divided by 7. Now, our general instinct is such that we'll first calculate, um, uh, calculate the sum over here. 31 plus 43 becomes 74. 74 gets divided by 7. I get a quotient of 10, remainder of 4. So I can say that the answer is equal to 4. Now, essentially, you can either add it up right away in the beginning and then calculate the final remainder that's sequence one or, or you know method one method two is when you calculate the initial remainders uh, by calculating the individual remainders of both these numbers so you divide 31 by 7 calculate the remainder you divide 43 by 7 calculate the remainder and then say that man you know i'm getting a remainder of three in the first case one in the second case since i'm having a um, the addition symbol over here, I'll, I'll add the remainders that I get over here to get the final answer to be 4. Now, for this question, or if I, if I give you this question, if I ask you this question, which sequence do you feel is a better sequence to solve out the answer? Better, by better, I mean it also needs to take lesser time, it's, it's less complex. What is a less complex sequence? What would take you less time? Okay, I want more answers, guys. Please put your answer in the short answer poll. Just trying to understand your, um, your you know, thinking over here. Okay, someone tells me it's one, but it depends. Okay, we'll also see those cases as well. Now, for this question, I typically feel that both cases work, but, but I would rather say that, you know, I'll go with the first approach because that's more instinctive to me. But what if I give you a product sign between these two numbers? It's not addition anymore. It's, it's now a product of 31 and 43. If I do the first, uh, if I go through the first sequence, and let me also end the poll. Let me delete this out. Okay, if I go through the first sequence, I need to calculate the product. Calculating product is a difficult task. If I tell you, uh, you know, calculate 81 times 87 for me. That's a difficult task, right? So, you know, you need to calculate the product and then find out the remainder. The second sequence is you calculate the individual remainders. Since you have a product sign, you multiply these two remainders and find the final answer. What do you think is a better sequence for question number two over here? Definitely the second one, correct? Definitely the second one, absolutely correct. One is more fun. <laughs> one is definitely more fun if you don't want to lose out time on the last eight questions or the last block of questions in the GMAT. If you don't want to rush through, then only one is, is something that you can take up. Can no longer see the poll. I'm actually not putting up a uh, I'm actually not putting up a poll and who's this? Um, okay. Uh, Shaoli, I'm not putting up a poll. I'm just trying to get your answers through the uh, short answer poll. So, so this works for me, you know. Okay, uh, if you want, I can also broadcast the results, right? Okay, so thank you for all of your answers. I'm going to end the poll and clear all the answers. Now, definitely for this question, um, I would say the second uh, sequence is, is a much, much better sequence, right? It saves you a lot of time. But you also need to understand why does this process work? Is it something that would work for all questions or is it only because of only works for these two questions? It works for all questions. How? Uh, it uses the same concept. Dividend is equal to divisor times quotient plus remainder. Now what's the dividend over here? 31. What's the divisor? 7. So 31 can be written in the same format. 43 can be written in the same format. So 31 is 7 times 4 plus 3. 43 is 7 times uh, uh, 6 plus 1. 
So then when you add these two numbers, you're essentially adding these two numbers as well. So what you have is you add these two numbers, take the seven common. If you take that out, what do you have? You have seven times something plus the two remainders. That's the final answer. When you multiply this again, something very, very uh, similar happens over here. So I have 31, I have 43. Now consider when I multiply two numbers A plus B with another two numbers C plus D. When I multiply these two, what do I get? I get A B A C plus B C. So I need to you know expand this out. So what do I have? Is I have seven times four plus uh, times seven times six. Then I have three times seven times six. That is B C. And then you have seven times four times one. That is A D. And lastly three times one which is equal to BD. So simplify this out, you take seven common, you again see that it terms, it comes in the form of seven P plus R, where R is simply the product of the remainders that you would essentially find out individually, right? This is the same concept that's happening over here. So with that, I'll now move on to question number four. Whatever we have learned over here, we'll try to apply that same thing in the next coming questions. You already know how to, what's the process, right? You need to mark a still solve it. I have 19 people. Okay. The energy level is slightly lower. Let's not get that lower because the next concept we'll go to is something that you would love to learn. So let's get those 50 people mark a still solving piece. Okay. That is perfect. Let's go to question number four. All the best for this one. Right. Last three seconds. Please mark your answer if you have not done so. Three, two, and bam. One. Okay, let me end the phone, broadcast the results. So let's see. Uh forty-eight percent if you tell me that the answer for this question is choice A. Interesting. Eight percent if you tell me it's choice B. Okay, twenty-seven percent if you tell me it's choice C, another 5% between choices D and E. All right, that's that's interesting. Okay, now, very, very quickly in the short answer poll, what is the remainder? Let me re reopen the poll. What is the remainder when 24 is divided by 3? What's the remainder when 24 is divided by 3? It's equal to zero, right? Absolutely correct. What's the remainder? Sashi, I'm talking about the remainder, not the quotient. It's equal to zero. I hope that's a Miss French, right? Okay. What's the remainder when 38 is divided by three? Let's get this. What's the remainder when 38 is divided by three? 
Okay, interesting. I'm getting ones and threes as well. It's equal to two, right? It's equal to two. It's as simple as that. Now, okay, with that, let's stop over here. I'm going to end the poll. Just give me one moment to clear all the answers. And now let's think and take a step back. So what do I have? I have 24 to the power 3 times 38 to the power 5, right? So how can I write this out? I can write this out, uh, write this out as 24 times 24 times 24. So I write this out thrice. And then I write 38 how many times? 5 times. Will I be correct doing this in a very quick yes and no, please? Will I be correct doing this? Okay, people tell me no. Why? I can write 30, 24 to the power 3 as 3 times 24 in its product form, right? Okay, very interesting. 11 people who tell me that I cannot write this, tell me the reason. Why can I not write this? Can I not write 2 to the power 2, which is essentially a 4, in the form of 2 times 2? Can I do not? Can I not write this? I definitely can, right? Okay, I have I have eight people who tell me I cannot do that. I need to I need to understand. No, I'll not end up spending 61 minutes, trust me. I'll not end up spending 60 I'll not end up spending 61 minutes. I'll, I'll get to that point. I'm just asking this mathematically. Would, would I be correct if I write this out? In terms of mathematics, please tell me out. Would I be correct if I write this in terms of mathematics? Definitely yes, right? Mathematically correct, right? Now, I'm writing this out just to help you understand the question. That's it. Yes, I'm not asking if it was efficient or not. But thank you, whoever that was. Thank you, Joseph, for that comment. I'm actually looking for, I was actually looking for that. Okay, so now let's take a step back. You know, remember sequence one and sequence two. What did we learn? We learned to calculate individual remainders, right? Now, I know that the remainders that I'll get from 24s are zeros. The remainders that I'll get from 38s are twos. So essentially, at the end, I'll need to multiply all the zeros and the twos. I have three zeros and five twos. Yes or no? I need to multiply all these zeros and twos, right? So essentially, the final answer would become a zero. Because I'm multiplying a zero with other numbers. That doesn't make sense. I'll end up getting a zero itself. So that is the reason why I wanted you people to just look, visualize and understand what am I talking about here. I'll definitely not, um, not, not get 61 minutes on this question. Okay, what if one side is not resulting in a zero? We'll look at those questions as well. Do not worry. I have those questions as well. But, but, is, uh, an, okay, this is very interesting. Where is my yes no poll? Just give me one moment, please, guys. I have my yes no poll over here. Let me clear all the answers. Tell me, is the solution for this question clear? Is it clear? Is the solution for this, why is it zero, clear to all of you? That is perfect. Okay, one very quickly in the short answer poll, which sequence did I use to solve this question? Sequence one versus sequence two, which did I use to solve this question? I used sequence two, by that I mean I calculated the individual remainders and lastly multiplied the remainders over here. Now, as you people know I'm a bit silly, I have another silly ask of you. In all of these questions, and let me clear all the sh uh, clear all the answers from the short answer poll. Now I'll, I'll show you the I'll show you the answer first. Now since 24 is completely divisible by three, I have zeros over here. Multiply those zeros with whatever number I get later on. Finally, the answer becomes um, a zero itself. So so I'll not invest a lot of time finding out what remainder would I get it from the second number. However. I did not consider the powers first. I just considered 24 or 38, right? That's what I did. Can you people in the short answer poll write that always consider base numbers and then exponents? Can you write this statement for me? It's, it might sound very silly to all of you. I just want you people to write it out so that it ingrains in your head. You do not forget this. Always consider the base 
than the exponent. Always consider the base than the exponent, right? Thank you for being a part of my silly asks. It really would help you later on, trust me. But thank you for writing that out. Okay, so we'll keep that in our mind, right? I'll end the poll. Thank you for all of your answers. I'll clear all the answers. And now I'll move on to the next question, question number five. Just give me one moment. Let me bring you the poll for question number five. Okay, I have the poll for question number five. Just a moment. Yes. So I have the poll over here. Can you please mark a cell solving? And trust me, things start getting, you know, very interesting from this point. Okay, I have 48 people. The, 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 the level of um, interaction is high right now. Let's go to question number five. All the best for this one. Okay, last five seconds, everyone. Last five seconds. And I'll take you to 100% 100 accuracy, trust me. In another two questions, I'll take this percentage accuracy to at least a 90. Currently, it's around that 90 only. That's good. So I'm going to end the poll and broadcast the results. So it's 82 percentage of you. I'm barring those 10 percent who have not marked the answer. So, but, but, but out of those... Uh, 54 people, 49 of you tell me that the answer for this question is choice C. That's um, that's two. All right. Again, very, very quickly. In the short answer poll, tell me sequence one or sequence two. Definitely sequence two, right? I'm not, I'm not calculating the product over here. I'm not calculating that at all. Okay. All right. That is fun. So, I have 25 times 38 to the power 3. Again, I have an exponent. What I'll do, I'll not consider the exponent right at the start. I'll consider the base number, then bring in the exponent at a later point in time. Right? Okay. So what's the base number? The base number is 25 times 38. What's the remainder? Let me very quickly clear out the answers. What's the remainder when 25 is divided by 3? It's equal to 1. What's the remainder when 38 is divided by 3? It's equal to 2. Perfect. Let me go to the next slide. So I can write this number in terms of 25 times 38, 25 times 38, 25 times 38. I get a remainder of 1 from the first number, 2 from the second number. So what's the remainder? The effective remainder is 1 times 2, which is 2. I then have a power of 3. I'll bring this power. And what do I get? I have 2 to the power 3. That's equal to 8. But can this be the answer? This cannot be the answer because this, again, does not... It is, is not less than the divisor, which is 3 over here. So lastly, have to divide 8 by 3 to get to the final answer. When I divide 8 by 3, the final remainder comes out to be 2. That is the answer for this question. So two, three things that we learned are now cemented once. If you have any... So again, uh, okay, Neetha has a very interesting question. What is the exponent is really big? I'll, 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 I'll tell you that as well. I also have that question, Nita, in, in the next coming questions that I have over here. Okay, that is good. Now, tell me, um, again, two, three things very quickly. Let me reiterate. Don't put a yes or a no. I've not asked a question yet. So, we'll first consider the base. Always remember this. 
then consider the exponent always remember this calculate the individual remainders understand sequence 1 versus sequence 2 right and then we'll we'll ch uh, we'll chalk it out in the later stage right with that okay is that clear to all of you now you can answer in a yes or no and these instructions of keeping the base number and exponent keep that in mind please it's a request from now on falling in love with the approach that is good i had right approach but god two times two times two is equal to 60 six oh that's bad don't worry you'd not make that mistake once more because you've already gotten the you know taste of getting a question incorrect even after spending the time okay let's now move to question number six but before i move into that question i have another very interesting thing over here and now let me talk about a facilitator for your GMAT number properties question, especially out of divisibility and remainders. Right? Okay, perfect. The, 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 uh, okay, b even before that, uh, what do I have? I have sequence one, sequence two, and always consider the base number, then the exponent over here. Keep that in mind. With that, let's talk about negative remainders. Now, negative remainders are a facilitator for you. How? It will help you ease your calculations. Consider that. It will help you ease your calculations and we'll check that out. How does it help us ease calculations? We will look at those kind of questions. But before that, let's understand what are negative remainders and the constraints around negative remainders. Okay, so very, very quickly, if I divide, let's say five by two, I get a remainder of one, right? By the definition of remainders, I know that it has to be less than the divisor. It either is equal to zero or greater than zero. It can never be a negative number. Then how the hell do I have a negative remainder concept? It's an intermediate concept that helps us solve questions faster, ease the calculations complexity. That's how it is used, right? It's never the final answer because by in, in mathematics, remainders can never be negative. It, it's always has, it, it has to be positive in nature. So now let's understand how you go about this entire concept. Now, if I get a remainder of plus one by doing, by taking the divisor to be two, quotient to be two, the remainder would be plus one. What if the quotient is not two, but three? The remainder in this case is equal to minus one. I'll take another example. Let's say I divide eight by three. I get a remainder of two. The quotient over here, let's say, is, uh, is, is two. What if the, I increase the quotient by one? I get a remainder of minus one. Now, how do I, you know, reach to these negative remainders? How do I get to these values? Keep this in mind. The value of positive remainder is equal to the negative remainder plus the divisor. Or essentially, the value of negative remainder is equal to the positive remainder minus the divisor. In both these questions, what is the initial positive remainder? Plus one. What is the uh, divisor over here? The divisor is two. So when you subtract two from plus one, you get minus one. That's your negative remainder. Over here, the positive remainder is two. The divisor is equal to three. When you subtract three from two, you get minus one. That's your negative remainder. So very, very important. The value of negative remainder is the positive remainder minus the divisor. Now, how do you use this? We'll use this to solve, you know, to solve questions, ease calculations. However, keep this in mind that by the definition of mathematics, remainders always have to be a non-negative number. So even if the final answer comes out to be a negative number, please convert that to a positive number and only then mark the answer. By that I mean, please do not mark minus one as the final answer, that won't work, right? You have to convert that into a positive number. By that, how do, I, how do you convert into a positive number? Simply add the divisor, that's it, right? With that, let's move into question number six. Just give me one moment. Clear all the answers, reopen the poll. Okay, I have question number six. Can you please mark a still solving? And again, we are reaching the most in interesting part of the session. Khadija has a question for me. How is this approach better than what we learned previously? I'll have questions and you would say that man, if this approach didn't exist, things would have been tough for us. And I'll show you those questions right now. Okay, question number six here on your screen 
all the best for this one All right, uh, five more seconds to mark the answer for this one. Let's get the answers for this question in the poll, please. Three, two, one, and 0 0.5 and zero. All right, perfect. I'm going to end the poll. Broadcast the results. I can see 69% of you tell me that the answer for this question is choice D. 15% uh, of you tell me that it's choice C. Another 8% among choices A, B, and E. So let's look at this question again. Something that we learned, we'll just reiterate and then play along the same lines. I have numbers, I have exponents. What do I do? I'll use the exponents at a later stage. I'll use the base numbers initially. In the short answer poll, tell me very quickly, uh, sequence 1 or sequence 2? Definitely sequence 2, right? I'm not going to calculate these numbers over here. So perfect. Sequence 2 is absolutely correct. I'm going to uh, um, end the poll, clear all the answers. Give me a moment over here. That is perfect. Okay. I have 24, 38, and 17. Now, What's the remainder in the short answer poll, guys? What's the remainder when 24 is divided by uh, 3? It's equal to 0, right? Perfect. Now, tell me, in a yes or a no, do I even need to consider this part then? Do I even need to consider this part? I do not need to because I'm, once I have a 0, the product is always going to be 0. So this part gets cancelled out. I only have 17 to the power 17. Okay, thank you for all of your answers. I'm going to clear all the answers. Take the poll over here. That is perfect. Now, 17 to the power 17 is divided by 3. What's the remainder when 17 is divided by 3? Very quickly in the short answer poll. It's equal to 2 or it's equal to 2 or tell me it's 2 or minus one absolutely correct it's two or minus one so now let's simplify this out so i only have 17 to the power seven i need to calculate the remainder when this is divided by three now when 17 is divided by um, uh, by by three i get two remainders one is two the other is minus one remember i have an exponent of seven so now this is a question for everyone and especially khadija what would I rather calculate? Minus 1 to the power 7 or 2 to the power 7? What would I ra rather calculate? Tell me this. What's easier to calculate? Definitely minus 1 to the power 7, right? And that's how we make things easy. Because 2 to the power 7 is 
still better to calculate. What if I told you 2 to the power 17? Man, this is a nightmare. I'm not going to. And for this question, I'm definitely taking 61 minutes. now. <laughs> right? So definitely not calculate this. Right? So I have minus 1 to the power 7. I have 2 to the power 7. Definitely not calculating this. I'll go with this approach. So negative remainders help me solve a question in a much, much more easier manner. Right? Okay, I have someone saying, Akshita, what is the actual issue? Can you please very quickly type it out for me? Akshita, can you please type it out for me? What's the issue? What did you not understand? Very quickly, please. The minus one thing. Okay, I have the positive remainder to be plus two, right? I know that negative remainders can be obtained when I subtract the divisor from my, uh, from the positive remainder. So I subtract 3, which is the divisor, from 2, which is the positive remainder. I get minus 1 as, as the answer. Now, why do I need minus 1? Because I don't want to calculate 2 to the power 7 or 17 or 2 to the power 7. You know, very difficult complex numbers. I don't want to expend time over here. That's the reason I'm converting a positive remainder into a negative remainder to save time, to make it faster, to make sure I'm not making any errors. I hope that's now clear to you, right? Okay, that is good. That is good. This is an amazing trick. I know. I know. Okay, so I have what? I have minus one to the power seven. I know minus one to the power an odd number always returns me a minus one. So the final answer is minus one. Any of you mark this, got this wrong because I told you, please convert into a positive remainder. How do I do that? I just add the divisor to it. When I add the divisor to it, minus one, minus one becomes plus one. When minus one becomes, oh, sorry, minus one becomes two, sorry. Minus one becomes two, I have the final answer to be two. Very quickly in the yes no poll, is the solution clear to all of you? Is the entire process start to end clear to all of you? That is peach. Perfect. All right, I'm going to hide the poll over here, bringing in the seventh question for all of you. Like this question slightly more, I feel. Please mark a still solving. You know the process. I will lag for a still solving throughout the session. I promise you that. I have 37 people, guys, please, let's, let's reach to 50. I have 41. I need nine more volunteers. It's a train that's traveling slowly. I have 48. Two more. 49. I'm stuck at a 49. Need one more. That's it. Okay, I have my 50 mark. Thank you. Let go, let's go to question number seven. All the best for this one. All right, last five seconds. And I promised you people that I bring the accuracy numbers to a 90 percentage. I actually promised 100, but even 90 is fine for me. And I'll tell you what that number looks right now. Let me broadcast the results and the poll. Okay. 58 of you marked the answer, 57 of you marked choice E. That's the accuracy I'm talking about. It's almost at a 97 right now, or a 98 rather. 
that's good. I just missed that 100 mark by one person away, but that's perfect. You not make that mistake the next time. I, I assure you this. I assure you this. Okay, so what do I have? 24, 38, 17, and then I have the divisor to be equal to 6. Um, very quickly in the short answer poll, what's the remainder when I divide 24 by uh, 6? It's equal to 0. If it's equal to 0, do I consider this part? Do I consider this part in a yes or no poll that I've, write, I've put out right now? I do not consider this part, right? Absolutely correct. Okay, thank you for all of your answers. I'll hide the poll. Sorry before I hide I hit the poll before telling you people. Sorry for that. Okay, so that is good. That is good. That is good. Uh, 17 to the power 7. When I divide this by 6 in the short answer poll, very, very quickly, what are the two remainders that I would get? What are the two remainders? Two remainders that I would get. I get a 5 or a minus 1. I get a 5 or a minus 1. Absolutely peach. Okay. Now, what would you rather calculate? 5 to the power 7 or minus 1 to the power 7? What would you calculate? 5 to the power 7 or minus 1 to the power 7? Definitely minus 1 to the power 7. This is, this is, this will take me 61 minutes. I'll not do that. Right? So life becomes easy when I have negative remainders in front of me. Now, what do I have over here? I have minus 1 to the power an even, uh, odd number. What, the, what does it return me? It returns me a minus 1. Right? It returns me a minus 1. Okay. Can that be the answer? It cannot be the answer. What do I have? I have to convert this negative remainder into a positive remainder. How do I do that? I simply add the divisor to it. So minus 1 plus 6 gives me a 5. That is the answer for this question. 98% of you got this question correct. 98% of you who marked the answer got this question correct. And I'm super duper happy. Right? That is, that is nice. 5 to the power 7 can be broken down into 125 into 125 into 5. Okay, yeah. Someone tells me that. Who, who is this? Um, someone tells me that. If, if you Do that if you have the entire life. Yes. If, if you have the entire life, you do that. Really, so she tells me that that's that's nice. Okay, seventeen to the power seven. Essentially, seven, which needs to be considered. Do do we really need to consider minus one? Please, correct. yeah, I need to consider minus one, right? Because if I do not do that, a winner, my I'll take up a lot of time. That doesn't work. Over here, you might feel that the remainder is five, and that would be the final answer. But no, if the power is eight, let's say, if the power is eight, not a seven, what would you do then? Right. So please do not do that. Complete the steps in, 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 you know, I would say complete 100% of the steps. Only then you'd get questions correct. Otherwise, it would, uh, it would make things difficult for you. Please. This is, this is not that difficult. Trust me. You just take around five more seconds to do this. But yes, do the step. Right. Uh, Avinav, I hope that's clear to you. All right. Uh, can I speed up? I cannot speed up more than this. This is the speed that we work for. Uh, essentially, the speed that you people are going through. Um, I hope that makes sense. But I also have to go through, go for, go with all the students that I have in the session, right? Okay. Let's now move on to question number eight. Now, the three prodigal sons return. Question number eight, nine, and ten. Before I move into these three questions, let me go back to the poll, end the poll, and, and clear all the answers. Very, very quickly in the short answer poll. We answer in a yes or a no, rather. I'll just bring in the yes, no poll. Answer in a yes, no, or, or a no. The exponent at a later stage, the base number first. Is that clear to all of you? The base number first, the exponent at a later stage. Is that clear to all of you? Okay, that is good. I'm going to end the poll, clear all the answers. I have another question for all of you. When I say that 24 gives me a remainder of 0, when I divide it by 3 or 6, it essentially means that that 3 or 6 is inside that 24, right? Yes or no? 
if I say 24 is divisible by 6 or gives me a remainder of 0, it means I have a 6 inside 24. So whenever I break 24 into numbers, I can write 24 as 6 times something. So I have this number contained in the initial number. Keep this in mind as well. With that, we'll move on to question number 8. You know the drill? Click on still solving, please. Okay, perfect. Let's go to question number eight. Uh, before that, again, it's completely okay to work with negative remainders. Make sure you convert the negative remainder into uh, a positive remainder when you mark the answer. Very, very important. How do you do that? You remember this formula. Positive remainder is equal to negative remainder plus the divisor. And lastly, when k is divided by n, that means 24 is divided by divisible by 6, n is present inside k. 6 is present inside 24, right? Let's move ahead to the next question. Okay, even before that, I have something else. Yes, I have to count. I, I literally forgot this. I'm very, very sorry. Um, in, 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 the, in the process of solving questions. Now, this is something that I would re request you to take a look at. And it's a learning process. You can experience the count 2 dot trial. That's an adaptive learning process. You only learn what you need to learn. And then you do that through our free trial or your paid account. It contains, make sure you go through the diagnostic quizzes. And um, since we are doing divisibility and remainders, you have number properties chapters in the free trial. Go through the diagnostic quiz. This is your starting point. You understand what's your starting point. You then learn what you need to learn only based on the score that you get in the diagnostic quiz. The diagnostic quiz, again, is an, is an adaptive quiz. So you get to understand what kind of questions are you able to solve? What kind of questions are you not able to solve? The questions you're not able to solve will help you understand those concepts and then then you, you know channelize your efforts in the right direction so i've just pasted the link over here so this is what you do take the diagnostic quiz understand what's your starting score and then we tell you which are the files that you need to go through based on your starting score and finally you take the quizzes to understand what's your final improvement we have a lot of questions we introduce a lot of questions and the questions are divided into four parts the diagnostic questions to test what's your starting uh, score. The concept questions to test whether you are good to go with concepts. The process questions to understand whether you are applying the process properly. And finally, the GMAT skills questions to see whether you are able to solve GMAT level questions or not. When you do this in a proper order, you would definitely be successful. And that's the reason we have the most number of Q49 scorers twice, almost twice that of TTP, which is known for its quant and the most number of 700 plus reviews. And this continues for any month. I've given the data for June. If you go to gmatclub.com, see the numbers for July, see the numbers for August. The August numbers have started popping up as well. So it's a tremendous success that we have over here. And our students speak for it, right? Um, if you want to talk to one of our GMAT strategy experts to understand how to go about this entire process, you can book a free one-on-one -on -one call to do that. Uh, please uh, please understand this is only for students who are not EG Math students. I'll, I'll launch the link for all of you so that you know you can access the same through your account. All right, that is that is good. With that, let's now move in to question number eight. All the best for this one, guys.
All right, last 10 seconds to mark your answer. Three, two, and one. I'm going to end the poll broadcast to research. Now, last time when we had this question, we had 27% of you marking choice A. This time it's 52% of you, which is almost a hundred percent increase. That's good. That's good. Okay, but I still want to figure out what did the people who mark choice C do in this question and we will we'll go to that point that's that's not a concern at all now what do i have in this question i have what is the remainder when a positive integer p is divided by a positive integer m when m is greater than one then i'm given two statements so what what i need to find out over here is when i have p uh, uh, what is the remainder when p is divided by m m is greater than one now in the first statement, I have the value of p. The value of p is equal to m plus 1 to the power 8. Remember what we learned. Base number first, then the exponent. So what do I have? I have m plus 1 divided by m. I need to find out the remainder when m plus 1 is divided by m, right? And then I'll bring in the exponent of 8 over here. Now, very, very quickly, I can write m plus 1 by m to be equal to m by m plus 1 by m let me get the yes no poll so that i understand every bit of it is this clear to all of you i write m plus 1 by m to be m by m plus 1 by m is this clear to all of you that is perfect that is perfect let me end the poll clear all the answers because i have to some two more questions to ask okay let me get the poll over here for better clarity all right, so what is the remainder in the short answer poll? Tell me, guys, what is the remainder when m is divided by m? What is the remainder when m is divided by m? Okay, someone tells me it's 1. That's interesting. What's the remainder when you divide 2 by 2? For people who are telling me 1, what's the remainder when you divide 2 by 2 or 10 by 10 or 15 by 15? It's always equal to 0, right? I do not get a number that's equal to 1 over here. So the remainder that I get over here is equal to 0. What is the remainder when 1 is divided by m and I know that m is greater than 1? First you people tell me, then I'll help you understand what's the remainder over here. Let me clear all the answers very quickly. In the short answer poll, guys, what's the remainder when 1 is divided by m where m is a number which is greater than 1? Absolutely correct. This is gorgeous to see. You people tell me it's one one is absolutely correct now how do i reach to this conclusion now for example let's say when i divide one by two what's the remainder it's equal to one when i divide one by three what's the remainder it's equal to one when i divide one by hundred what's the remainder it's equal to one so if the numerator is one if it's lesser than the de denominator over here as we can see the remainder is always equal to one right so that's the answer for this question so i have a remainder of one over here so what is the total remainder when m plus one is divided by m in the short answer poll what's the final remainder when m plus one is divided by m it's equal to one absolutely correct and then what happens i bring in the exponent the exponent is equal to eight what's the value of one to the power eight it's equal to one all right is this the answer can i reach to the uh, final answer can I get the remainder? Yes, I can. If I can get the remainder, statement one is a sufficient statement for me. Okay. Yes, no poll. Is the statement's analysis clear to all of you? Statement one is a sufficient statement. Is it clear to all of you? Perfect. This is peach. Perfect. I'm going to end the poll, clear all the answers. Let's go to statement two. Statement two is not giving us any information about P. It just tells me that m is equal to 8. It just tells me the, that the value of m is equal to 8. Now, if the value of m is equal to 8, would this give us a return in the answer? It essentially uh, won't. I do not know anything about p. And then that means that statement 2 is not sufficient statement. The answer for this question becomes choice A, which 52% of you who marked the answer choice got correct. 
just taking the question forward, if the question stem says m is a positive integer, does the answer become very interesting question? It's a very interesting question, Joseph. Yes, because m can be 1 as well. And when I divide 1 by 1, the remainder becomes 0. Right? So that opens up a lot of possibilities. And that's an apps, you know, that's a, that's a wonderful observation over here. Very good to know. Okay, that is good. I hope I uh, I hope my explanation clears your answer, uh, clears your question, Joseph. Okay, SCG has a question for me. What if m plus two to the power eight? Again, there are infinite cases of what's and ifs, right? Again, we have to work through that method itself. If it's m plus two, then I cannot say whether. Um, whether the remainder would be one or more than one, right? So that becomes difficult. So in that question, uh, that, that case, choice A becomes difficult, right? Right. Okay. With that, let's now move ahead to question number nine. Let me bring out the poll over here. Can you please mark a uh, mark a still solving? Question number nine. Can you please mark a still solving? This still solving will come in my dreams today. <laughs> I'll try to mark it first. That is so nice of you. Uh, and I'm very sorry to uh, JV because, because I know it's silly, but again, this is me, you know, <laughs> this is Atria. Okay, let's go to question number nine. All the best for this one.
All right, last five seconds to mark your answer for this question. Three, two, one, and zero. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll and broadcast the results. So from a 30 percentage to a 56 percentage, again, almost a 100 percent increase, I would rather say a 90 percent increase on the numbers point of view. But that's success for me at least. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. Now for this question, do you remember that silly thing that I made you people write down in the comment section? Can you people tell me what am I talking about in the short answer poll? You people remember that? Base first and then exponent. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Thank you, guys. Okay, so we'll do the same thing over here. 38 to the power n squared divided by 13. So if I go around this question, I have two remainders. I first have to calculate the uh, you know remainder when I divide 38 by 13 because I'm considering um, uh, the base, right? So what's the remainder when I divide 38 by 13? Two remainders. I either get a plus 12 or I get a minus 1. Okay, tell me, uh, what do I calculate? 12 to the power n square or minus 1 to the power n square? What would you calculate if you had been in this place? Obviously, you would calculate minus 1 to the power n square, right? So you bring in minus 1 to the power n square and you get, I need, so the final remainder is minus 1 to the power n square. Now, what is n? I have no idea of, but I just know that n is a positive integer. Now. Uh, so if n is an integer, it can be two types of integers. If it's, if it's a positive integer, it can be two types of integers. It's either um, a, a, an even number or an odd number. If n is an odd number, what do I have? I have minus 1 to the power an odd number. That means I have minus 1 as the final answer. If minus 1 is the final remainder, again, minus 1 can never be the final answer. I need to convert this into a positive remainder. How do I do that? I add the divisor. So if n is odd in nature, the remainder would be equal to 12. Is this clear to all of you? Let me reopen the poll. Is this clear to all of you? If n is odd in nature, the final remainder would be equal to 12. Okay, that is perfect. I see two people for whom it's not clear. Can you please post that out in the Q&A pod? We'll help you out with that. Please post whatever confusion you have with this in the Q&A pod, these two people, please. Okay, if n is even, I have minus 1 to the power even. If minus 1, uh, we, we have not started with these statements at all. We're just analyzing the question stem right now, right? Just uh, analyzing the question stem. Okay, so if n is even, what do I have? I have um, minus 1 to the power an even number. If n is even, n square also has to be an even number. So minus 1 to the power an even number returns me a plus 1. So if n is even, remainder is plus 1. If n is odd, remainder is 12. The question now translates into such a easy question or, or, or rather a statement. What is the even odd nature of n? If it's even or odd, that's it. Is it clear up to this point? I just need to find out the even odd nature of n. Is it clear up to this point, everyone? In the yes no poll, please let me put the poll over here. That is good. That is good. That is good. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. Thank you for all of your responses. Let me clear all the answers. And now let's move into the statements. n leaves no remainder when divided by 4. In the short answer poll, can you people tell me? How can I write n as? n leaves no remainder when divided by 4. It's a multiple of 4, right? It's, it's written in the form of 4k plus 0, right? So it's, 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 it's even in nature. If it's a multiple of 4, it's even in nature. Okay, if it's even in nature, I can get to the final answer. So the remainder is possible using the first statement. That means the first statement is a sufficient statement for this question, right? Perfect. Let me clear all the answers. Let's go to the second statement. What is the second statement telling me? Root of n is only divisible by 1 and itself. Can you people tell me in the short answer poll, what kind of a number is only divisible by 1 and itself? What kind of a number am I talking about? I'm talking about a prime number. Absolutely correct. I'm talking about a prime number. All right. 
root of n that means is a prime number if root of n is a prime number n has to be the square of a prime number right n has to be the square of a prime number now we know that all prime numbers except 2 are odd right but there's one um, and prime number that's even in nature so i cannot you know with with a hundred percent certainty say that n is even or odd right since i cannot say n is even or odd statement 2 is not a sufficient statement to answer this question is the analysis of statement 2 clear to all of you is the analysis of statement 2 clear to all of you that is perfect just to point out statement 2 implies n square is equal to 116 uh-huh no so n square is divisible by 1 and itself essentially meaning i don't know where did you get 16 from but 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 essentially i'm, I'm talking about so n is a prime number right root n is, is is a prime number if root n is a prime number then whole square of n becomes a prime numbers whole square so we get 4 9 25 and so on yes n is a perfect square correct perfect square of a prime number to be more precise mathematically right okay that is good you you are getting these answers correctly so i'm happy um, I'll, I'll open the poll one last time before we move to question number 10 because i have something to ask you for question number 10 we need a very specific information do you people remember why 24 is divisible uh, why 24 leaves a uh, leaves a remainder of 0 when divided by 6 can you people please tell me the reason in the short answer poll again a silly question and i want some silly answers <laughs> uh, what what else did i tell you what else i used a specific keyword do you people remember that keyword it contains it is it, it, it's inside 24 that's absolutely correct that's that's perfect with that i'll move on to question number 10 very quickly the still solvings please very very quickly and you people are damn good you people remember everything that's a very good trait okay 34 people let's get this number okay some discount since this is the last question uh, let's get this number to 45-ish. I have 42 people, need 3 more. 43, 44, 44, 45. Okay, perfect. Let's go to question number 10. All the best for this one.
All right, last five seconds to mark the answer for this question. Three, two, and one. Okay, I'm going to end the poll and broadcast the results. So initially, I had an accuracy of 22% for this question. Now it's 47 so we have passed the threshold of 100% improvement for this one. This is perfect. That is good. That is good. Now, however, before I move into the question, I just want you people to tell me, now that you have solved so many questions and, and that technique through which I used to ask you that please embrace this and all of that, how confident are you people feeling? to Stanford Fulbright Scholarship. Man, that's... <laughs> you definitely need more practice. You definitely need more practice. Yes. This is just showing you the path of how to become better at something. That's it. You know? And then w once you get around another... Uh, you know, I would say so 20 odd questions, that's that that will seal the game for you. If you come give us hints during our GMAT 300%, no, I'm not doing that. I am not at all doing that. <laughs> How to build on what you have learned today. Very interesting question, by the way. You go to a free trial, go through the files, practice the questions that we have in the files. It will make sure that you are 100% on the topic. I can guarantee you this. Right? Okay, so with that, let's now move ahead with the solution for this question. Let me end the poll, clear all the answers. Thank you for all of your answers over here. Okay, M leaves, uh, so, so what do I have? What is the remainder when 4M is divided by 16, where M is a positive integer greater than 1? Now, before you ask me this question, can I cancel off 4 from both the sides and find out the answer again? It can be done. But make sure while you're putting the answer at the end, you put um, you multiply it with four again to make sure you don't mess it up, right? You can put out a four from this question because I always find two or three people asking me this question just to clear that doubt out from all of your mind. Okay, so what do I have? I have I need to find out the remainder when 4m is divided by 16. So I know I can write 4m to be 16q where q is the quotient plus r, r is the remainder over here, r needs to be less than 50, uh, le less than 16. Uh, over here. And I also know that m is a positive integer which is greater than 1. What's the first uh, statement? The first statement tells me m leaves the remainder of 4 when divided by 32 to the power 32. Again, we'll bring that equation. Dividend is equal to divide the terms quotient plus remainder into the uh, into the game. How do I write m as? m as 32 to the power 32 times the quotient plus the remainder. This is the value of m. I need to find out what's the remainder when 4m is divided by 16. So I'll convert this m into 4m. So I multiply a 4 to both the sides of this uh, equation. So 4m now becomes 4 times 32 to the power 32 k plus 4. Now, this number that I have over here, 32 to the power 32, answer me in a yes, no. This is a multiple of 16, yes or no. 32 to the power 32 k is a multiple of 16, yes or no. Definitely yes, because I have a 32. 32 is a multiple of 16. So uh, that's that's fair. What else do I have? When I multiply this 4 with the last 4 that I remain, that I have over here, this 4 with the last 4, I again get a 16. So this entire expression is essentially a multiple of 16. If this is a multiple of 16, if, if 4m is a multiple of 16, what's the remainder? The remainder is equal to 0. So the first statement, uh, the first statement gives us the answer, gives us the solution, and uh, hence, it's a sufficient statement to answer this question. Okay, in a very quick yes-no poll, is the analysis of the first statement clear to all of you? Is the analysis of this first statement clear to all of you? Okay, I have three people who have a problem. Tell me what is the issue. 
I have four people rather. In the short answer poll, very, very quickly. Okay, I need to, okay, okay. So the last part, I'll help you out with the last part. No, no problems over here. What do you have in the last part? Okay, uh, evaluation of remainder, that is cool. I know that 32 to the power 32 K, when divide, multiplied by four, this entire number is a multiple of 16. So no worries with that. I also need to multiply this four with this four, so I have another 16. So if I take 16 common, I know this is a multiple of 16, this is a multiple of 16, essentially the entire part is a multiple of 16, correct? If this entire part is a multiple of 16, the remainder is equal to 0. Is it now clear to you, Nabil? Is it now clear to you? That is perfect. That is perfect. Also, uh, uh, Oracle also says a yes, that is good. Okay, that is good. So, so the first statement is a sufficient statement. We'll now move on. To the second statement what do we have in the second statement it tells me m cube is divisible by 16 in the short answer poll 24 divisible by 6 can you translate this the, the can you translate the same thing in the short answer poll please what am i looking for 24 divisible by 6 compare this to m cube divisible by 16 what am i comparing something that I asked you people before we started this question. Can you write that out in the short answer poll? M cube contains 16. Absolutely perfect. M cube contains 16. Is this clear to all of you? Uh, just give me a moment. I'll clear the yes no poll. M cube contains 16. Is this clear to all of you? In the yes no poll, guys. M cube contains 16. Okay. Uh, 16 is equal to what? 2 to the power 4, right? So M cube essentially contains 2 to the power 4. Okay. I see two people saying no, it's not clear to them. Why is it not clear? Okay. They went off. That's good. <laughs> all right. I, I'm going to clear all the answers. Um, and, and also uh, end the poll and clear all the answers over here. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, sorry, yes, uh, let me clear all the answers over here. Okay, now let's move back into the question, understand what's, what do I have, um, what do I have over here. It tells me that m cube contains 16, that means m cube contains 2 to the power 4 in it. Now, I can write m to be equal to 2 to the power a into p1 to the power b into p to the power c, right, where, right, where 2, p1, p2, all these are what, all these are prime numbers, A, B, C's, all these are their exponents. So I'm writing this in terms of its prime factorized form. I'm writing this in its, in, in its, uh, in its prime factorized form. Is this clear to all of you in the yes, no poll, please? Is this clear to all of you in the yes, no poll, please? I'm writing M in its prime factorized form. If M is written in its prime factorized form, what would be the value of M cube? I just cube both the sides. I have m cube to be 2 to the power 3a times p1 to the power 3b times p2 to the power 3c and so on. This is what I have over here. Now, you people told me that I have a 16 inside m cube, right? I have a 16 inside m cube. That means I have a 2 to the power 4 inside m cube. So if I compare this 2 to the power 3a with 2 to the power 4, I have to make sure that this 2 to the power 3a is greater than or equal to 2 to the power 4. Only then I'll contain that 2 to the power 4 inside 2 to the power 3a. Is this clear to all of you in the yes no poll? Okay, uh, someone tells me it's not clear if it's okay, it's clear. Okay, then that is good. That is good. Uh, fine, so I have 2 to the power 3a, that needs to be at least 2 to the power 4 or higher, just to make sure that I have a 16 inside uh, my m cube over here. Now, if 2 to the power 3a needs to be greater than or equal to 2 to the power 4 essentially means that 3a needs to be greater than or equal to 4, or a needs to, great, in a needs to be greater than 4 by 3, what's the least number that's greater than or equal to 4 by 3 and is an integer? It's equal to 2, because understand that if a is the exponent it has to be an integer it cannot be a fractional number right so this is an integer okay what else do i have 
I have um, I have the minimum value of a let us go to the next part. So, the value of m is equal to 2 to the power something because I know the minimum value of a is equal to 2 put that over m over here. So, the value of m is 2 to the power 2 times something I am really not interested in this something part over here. What is the value of 4 m? I multiply a 4. So, I have a 4 over here 2 to the power 2 means a 4 I multiply another 4 that means I have 16 times something. So, 4 m is 16 times something that essentially tells me that the remainder when I divide 4 m by 16 is equal to 0 that gives me the second statement to be a valid and a sufficient statement as well. Is it clear to all of you? Please mark a yes in the yes no poll if it is clear to all of you. That is perfect. All right. I have two people telling me it is not clear. Can you please put down your concerns in the short answer poll? Which part to repeat? Can you please help me out with that? Which part do you need me to repeat? After a 3a is equal to 4. Okay. If 3a is greater than or equal to 4, what is the minimum number? Uh, a has to be greater than or equal to 4 by 3. Aditya tells me what uh, Aditya tell me what is the minimum number which is an integer and is greater than 4 by 3. Remember a has to be an integer in its prime factorized form we have learned that the exponent cannot be a fraction it has to be so it is equal to 2 right. Now if it is equal to 2 if it is equal to 2 that means m contains 2 to the power a at a minimum yes or no Aditya m contains 2 to the power 2 at a minimum yes or no. I have Aditya I also have uh, Nabil Aditya and Nabil both of you right okay perfect perfect if m contains a 2 to the power 2 in it 4 m would contain 4 times 2 to the power 2 in it which is 16 times something really not interested in that something part. So, that tells me 4 m has a 16 in it if 4 m has a 16 in it it is a sufficient statement. Is it clear to all of you now? Is it now clear to all of you? That is good. That is that is good. That is good. Again, just understand that I have some number inside another number. So I need to I have just done the same thing over here as well. Right? That is perfect. Okay. So that brings me to this was the last question, sadly. Uh, 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 not rather sadly, but yeah. So this was the last question that I wanted you people to, uh, to to essentially see. Now tell me, what did you learn from the session? Did you enjoy the session? Can we do a reverse calculation? Please do not. That 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 will take up a, that uh, that will take up more time. How much did you enjoy the session? That is good. Loved it. That is good. Okay. So I'll I'll just just help you out with another thing. You know. Um, you know, uh, what I would say is, is, is how many of you think that to, you know, master GMAT quant, you really need to be a math whiz. To master GMAT quant, how many of you think that you really need to be a math whiz? You do not have to be a math whiz very honestly. I have certain examples for you and I just want your time another for another three minutes. I have this I had this uh, student Krish and he was really good at maths but he faltered you know getting a good score in GMAT quant because GMAT quant is fairly different right. Um, I would I, I would say that very very important that you need to that you need to understand what are the right processes very simple to what we learned in today's session you need to understand what are the right processes follow those right processes even Krish did that got a Q51. Um, after he after he did that, he used scholarly name to understand a lot of his you know weaker areas. I would say Leonardo, one of my person favorites, was, he was a South American. You know, he was not being able to cross that Q45 mark. Then he started using the methodical approach. He stopped using those numbers approach and all of that. Once he started doing that, went on to score a Q49, got a Wharton Admit as well, and he used the analytics that the, that the quant scholarly name gives you. If you have not gone through the quant scholarly name, please do so. Uh, Mazibar has a story unlike a lot of you. So, ma what Mazibar did is he practiced a lot of questions from a lot of books, lot of materials. Did it help? No. 
because he was blindly practicing questions you know it was not helping him at all but then he came to us he understood that he needs to follow a process in after solving a question he needs to understand why did he make a question incorrect something that we did in today's session as well he needs to start off with easy questions then go on to medium and then difficult progressive learning is what we call it uh, right so so he followed that approach went on to score a q45 in a very short amount of time uh, well and more he was stuck at a q38 he was not being understand he did not understand why was he not being able to score high he went on to scholarium understood what are his his weaknesses worked on them went on to score a q50 you know so so this is what i'm talking about if you follow the right approach trust me it was it it would it would help you a lot so essentially you just need to focus on learning and adopting those good habits no shortcuts no tricks no atra helping out in the actual gmat <laughs> right so that's not going to happen but yes you can help yourself and you would have 300% accuracy when you when you follow the correct approach that's it that's 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 the only thing that i would i would want you people to you know keep keep in mind right with that um as a concluding remark i would just say believe in yourself i'll share the session pdf with you solve the next i guess i have two questions for all of you solve those two questions will help you understand um uh give you some more information on uh, uh, divisibility and remainders do that please once that is done go to free trial do the course i'll be i'm 100% sure you would get to that 90 percentage very very easily it will not be difficult for you um at all right i am so very happy you know to see all these comments for me and harsha over here i'm so very happy and and for us the only thing that matters is when you do good in your exams that's it right if you have any questions any doubts write to us at support i'll take care of that um and and then i'll again see you i'll again see you in the next session on on algebra that we have the next sunday please do make sure you, uh, you register for that as well um so that is all from my end i'm 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 sharing the ppt yes um, thank you for reminding that to me let me very quickly share the session ppt here goes the session ppt you also have two more questions please do make sure you solve those two questions and if you want to look at our process skill videos very very important and helpful in solving difficult questions i have also given you um uh, uh, the the that over here and with that if you want to talk to one of our and uh, one of our strategy experts and get a hold of contu.o course you can use these two you can i guess you can see it right and uh, what else let me uh let me let me also give you if you want to talk to one of our strategy experts how do you do that you use this link to book a free call with one of our strategy experts right okay so that was it from uh, from my end guys and and thank you for attending the session i hope you learned a lot thanks a lot to harsha he was a great support um throughout the entire session i really love that man you know we, we make sure that my sessions go absolutely seamless so thanks a lot harsha for that as well and and thank you guys for attending the session i'll again see you to, on our platform uh, doing our our uh, number properties course and in the next sessions um henceforth till the next time take care of yourself and and keep 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 a good health and and all the best for your future gmat um, studies and preparation Bye bye have a very very good night or good day or a good night ahead bye bye